number 26. 5x plus 7y equals 1 and ax plus by equals 1. In the given pair of equations, a and b are constants. The graph of this pair of equations in the xy plane is a pair of perpendicular lines. Which of the following pairs of equations also represents a pair of perpendicular lines? Okay, so perpendicular lines are ones that are at 90 degrees to each other. That's just, there we go. So our little, our little lines, they are, I'm trying to make them right angles. Hopefully I got it close enough. So they are perpendicular to each other. And that's what they look like. But for this problem, we don't have a graph in front of us. We have two equations. So when we're looking at the equations. How can you tell if two lines are perpendicular? You can tell by their slopes. Perpendicular lines, there is a pattern in their equations in their slopes. So if I had one line and its slope was, let's say, three-fifths, any line that is perpendicular to it would have to have a slope that is the negative reciprocal. I've also heard opposite reciprocal. I've heard a couple different terms for it. Ugh, different books call it different things, but it all means the same thing. It means you take the reciprocal of this, which means you swap the positions of the numerator and denominator. So that becomes five thirds. And then you change the sign. So it was positive here perpendicular line, the slope will be negative. If this had been negative, this would be positive. They have opposite signs and they are reciprocals. Okay, so that is the fact about the slopes. Now we have two lines that they give us and the first one has numbers in it. Actual numbers that we can see, 5x plus 7y equals 1. And the other one has uh, constants but we don't know what they are. The A and the B there are constants. We're told that right here, that they're constants. But we don't know what they are. They are numbers. So let's find the slope of this first one, and then we'll know what the slope of this line must be because they are perpendicular to each other. That's our symbol for perpendicular. Okay, so the easiest way to find the slope of a line is to put it into Y equals MX plus B format. You get y by itself, put everything else on the right, and then this number that's right here next to the x is your slope. So let's do that with our first one. To get everything over on this side and y by itself, first I'm going to get rid of that 5x by subtracting 5x from both sides. Then I have that 7y left on the left, and on the right hand side I have negative 5x plus 1. Now I want y all by itself, so I need to get rid of that 7. So I'm going to divide by 7 since it's 7 times y. To undo that, I need to divide. So I'm going to divide everything by 7 because in algebra we have to do that. We have to divide everything. We multiply, we multiply by everything. We divide, we divide everything. It must be balanced. So that leaves us with just a y on the left and negative 5 sevenths x plus 1 seventh on the right. Okay, so what is the slope of this line? As we said, it's the number right here next to the x, negative 5 sevenths. So I'm going to write this up here. The slope of this line is negative 5 sevenths. So what would the slope of a line perpendicular to that be? Well, negative 5 sevenths, we want to take the reciprocal. That makes it 7 fifths. And it's negative, so it needs to be the opposite. It needs to be positive. So the slope of this line must be 7 fifths. And I'm going to move this over here. Okay, so it has to equal 7 fifths. Well, I'm going to um, do the same thing I just did with that previous equation. I'm going to do it over here. And I'm going to see if I put this into y equals mx plus b format, what it says the slope is. So let's do the same thing we just did. I'm going to subtract the x's first. And that leaves me with by equals negative ax plus 1. Then I'm going to divide by that constant b. And I have to divide everything by that b. Same process. Don't get, you know, like, what? It's with, you know, numbers. But then um, letters, not numbers. Those letters represent numbers, they are constants, not variables, so we can do this. We can do the same thing we just did with the, the numbers we could see, <laughs> that 5 and 7. All right, so now we are left with y equals negative a b 
bx plus 1 over b. And that number out here, this 1 over b, which kind of looks like a heart, I drew that b wrong, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. This doesn't really matter. Again, this is what we're concerned with, that slope, negative a over b. Now, this line is perpendicular to the other one. So this slope must be equal to what we said the slope of any line perpendicular to the top line must be. So negative a over b must be equal to 7 fifths. Now, here's one little thing, and I'm going to rewrite this up at the top. So negative a over b must be equal to 7 fifths. Now you move forward as you just set this aside for a little bit, and we go over here and we look at, it's a little darker, here we go, look at our answers. And the first thing, and I always recommend looking at your answers when you, at some point before you get to your final answer, because you get clues from the multiple choice answers that are provided. And there's a big clue right off the bat. Now look at this. The first equation in three of these is the same. Only one of them is different. Okay, so I think I should look at this one right off. So our question is, which of the following pairs of equations also represents a pair of perpendicular, perpendicular lines? We have those A's and B's again. Okay, now this last one looks, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can really see it here. It looks almost identical to the original. The only thing they did was they changed that negative there is different. It was a positive before. So that was it. Negative and positive. But did they change the other equation? No. The other equation is ax plus by equals 1. Nothing's changed in that second equation. So if the top equation here has changed from this original one, its slope will have changed. So there's no way. If the slope of this has changed, but this hasn't changed, they can't be perpendicular anymore because that's a very specific relationship. You can't change one without changing the other also. They kind of move in tandem together. If one changes, the other has to change for it still to be true. So I already know D is out. So, okay, A, B, and C. And now here's another good clue. A, B, and C all have that same first equation. So I only have to figure out the slope of that line one time and then I will determine which of these other ones is the, the one that's perpendicular to it, which is nice. So, okay, so I've got 10x plus 7y equals 1. And again, I'm going to put it in y equals mx plus b format. Right, and so you should be old hands at this by now. It's the third time we've done it in this problem. So I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. And then I get 7y equals negative 10x plus 1. And then I divide by 7. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit, give us some more room. <laughs> and finally, again, here I have y equals negative 10 sevenths x plus 1 seventh. Just like before, this on the end, the number really doesn't matter. I'm only looking at this slope. So the slope of these lines, all three, all three lines over here that we're trying to be perpendicular to, the slope is negative 10 sevenths. Okay, I'm going to do my erasing everything again. I'm going to rewrite that. So the slope is negative 10 sevenths. And I want to figure out which of these three lines is perpendicular to it. So what would its slope be? Remember, I need to do the reciprocal. So that makes it 7 over 10. And this is negative, so this is positive, 7 tenths. So I need the one of these three that has a slope of 7 tenths. How do I figure it out? It doesn't have numbers in it. Well, what do I know? I know that negative a over b equals 7 fifths. How do I get from 7 fifths to 7 tenths? Look at it this way. So if I said 7 fifths times what would get me to 7 tenths? And when we're multiplying fractions, you multiply the numbers on top, you multiply the numbers on the bottom. So 7 times what equals 7? 
1. 5 times what equals 10? 2. So I would need to multiply by 1 over 2. So that means, look at it this way, negative a over b times 1 half would also equal 7 tenths because 7 fifths is the same as negative a over b. So I can replace 7 fifths with negative a over b. Well, move this up again. Let's do this separately. Negative a over b times 1 half. What do I get without that? without that. What do I get if I just do that? I get negative a over 2 times b, 2b. So that a didn't change, but the b was multiplied by 2. That's what I'm looking for. I am looking for a line over here where the a didn't change, but the b is multiplied by 2. So let's look at our options. So remember, we started with ax plus by equals 1. So I want one where the a didn't change. Boom, that one's out. They changed it to a 2ax. C is out. So, okay. The A stays the same and the B is multiplied by 2. It is not a different sign. The sign stayed the same. I just need it to be multiplied by 2. I started with BY, positive BY. There we go. Multiply by 2. 2BY. Two this one is being multiplied by negative 2. That one is out. And my answer is... B. That is the one. This is not a problem you are likely to see in your math book. Honestly, this is a puzzle problem. They love putting puzzle problems at the very end of these tests. They just do. It really is testing your creative problem solving and thinking. And on these kind of problems, um, if you get to this point, always look at those, those answers if they got them. They are going to be a, a big help. If sometimes you can't figure out the plan of attack, look at those answers first and say move forward from there. If this was helpful or useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.